Hi everybody, uh, Scott and Brian here from the Beaver Corporation. What the heck is a Beaver Corporation? Well, that's our wholesale uh, subsidiary that imports stuff from overseas, sells it to the Japanese market. We're here uh, as Beaver, so we have uh, different shirts on today, yes. but we're still the good old HLJ boys at heart. So, um, 2014 is the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I, and we expected to see some World War I tank kits from maybe some Chinese manufacturers yeah. or somebody. I didn't expect it from Tamiya. Did you expect it from Tamiya? Not at all. No. At Boom. All. Here we have. Yeah. It's the Mark IV male. Uh, sort of the, uh, the classic tank of, of World War I that the, uh, I think uh, the Brits put it together as pretty much the first practical tank of World War I. So yes, Tamiya, 135th Mark IV male tank, the 100th anniversary of World War I. And here it is in action. Uh, they built up a nice little uh, trench diorama here in World War One, and uh, there it is. It's motorized. It's got a single motor, runs off of one uh, uh, AA battery, and uh, they've affirmed, affirmed that this is moving at a scale six kilometers per hour, so it is dead-on accurate for the speed there. You don't want your, uh, you know, Mark IV rhomboid tanks um, doing all kibbles and bits kind of action there. So this is what it would look like if you were down there in the trenches in World War One with this big monster coming at you. So this is uh, how it works and running in action. I think you can actually. So I could they. I asked him to open it up. So if you, the access hatch is in there. You see the battery. Uh, the battery comes out. And you can change the battery, stick it in there. Uh, we can see some more of the motor over there, and, and the switch is right on the bottom. So a boink, you turn that on, and you're good to go. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and off. so very cool, very cool. It's what it runs. So let's move on over to the spruce here. And uh, you can see here's a. Uh, a base of I was going to say, oh, it is unpainted, but they put some decals on there. There's a nicely painted up version. And if you pan on down, we've got, oh, well, we'll go over here. You can see the uh, pretty cool gear mechanisms they have there to make it, because as you can see on the back here, as I'll touch this, uh, the, the, the drive wheels are kind of way out in these sections back here, so it would be kind of hard to have a direct motor drive. So they've come up with this cool gear set up like that, uh, ready to go. Put it in there. And here's another one with it on. If you pan down here a bit, we've got the sprues laid out, as you can see. Uh, I'm sure this is like all Tamiya kits, the, uh, the fit is probably as perfect as you can get. Now you see the molding is nice and crisp and clean. So some people were saying, oh no, it's motorized, it's a toy. We don't want that motorized toy, do we? But as you can see here, the detail is spot on. And it's a per uh, I'm not going to count all the rivets, but I bet you if you did, you would probably find that the rivets are exactly the right count. So for you rivet counters out there, uh, there's your uh, homework. Uh, the, the tracks are uh, snapped together, patchy patchy type snap tracks. Uh, as you can see here, uh, as you saw when it was running, they hold together just fine, uh, work like the real tracks do. You got some metal chain, there's the gearbox in there, and, and figure. there's figures. Now this doesn't come with the set, uh, but this is sold separately coming in uh, July. So British uh, World War I guys to go with your British tank. Now the tank, uh, these are both actually coming out at the same time uh, in uh, July. Uh, the tank is going to be for 6,900 yen. The figure set is for 1,200 yen. Uh, there's a nice diorama up there with the figures incorporated in it. Uh, so you can get your 100 year anniversary uh, celebrations on. Or celebrations or memories. Um, you don't really like to celebrate wars too much, but uh, your remembrances of the Great War uh, there. And moving on, oh, this is, it's hard to move on because this is also great. Uh, we got another great release in 148 scale. Now this is sort of a, sort of a variation of their M10 kit that they released as the actual real vehicle was too. This is the M10 2C Achilles. This is the British version uh, of uh, uh, the, the M10 tank destroyer. It had the 17-pounder gun uh, in place of the, um, you know, the old, uh, well, I think this was called the 3-inch gun on the M10 tank destroyer. So, you know, the uh, British took it, put their potent 17-pounder on it, uh, added some other different details, and bam, you got your Achilles, uh, which could uh, uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, the heaviest German armor. It couldn't really go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It could knock them out, but it couldn't really take a hit, had thin armor, but a very cool vehicle. So we got that, and that's when it's coming out, also in July. So there's a lot of good stuff coming from Tamiya in July. And here we are at the Tamiya booth still, uh, checking out the 1700th all-new tooling kit of the CV3 aircraft carrier Saratoga. Saratoga had a, a colorful history. Uh, it was originally laid down as a cruiser, I believe, in uh, 1917. was converted to a carrier in 1922. You can see it's cool. It's got like this double, double island thing there going on. Uh, plenty of old guns. Um, and then it was unceremoniously sunk in atomic bomb tests uh, in 1946. Uh, but if you got to go, that's a pretty cool way to go. 
Uh, took a couple of kamikaze hits there during the war, but uh, obviously shook those off. And you can see here, yeah, that's the same thing as I'm holding. It comes with a complement of uh, two types of aircraft, four each. These are Night Attack Hellcats, you can see in the back here. These are Hellcats. And Night Attack Avengers, you can see they're Night Attack, but they got the little radomes on uh, the right wing side there. So yeah, all new kit. The illustrious carrier CV-3 Saratoga. And checking out the sprues here, you got, you got the one-piece uh, flight deck there, two-piece hull, put that together, some of the, the under underhull stuff there. And uh, then there's going to be two of these sprues, so as I mentioned, you're going to get four Avengers and four Hellcats. And uh, quite remarkable is how, how uh, thin the guns are, on the, the five-inch guns that are, are mounted around the island there. So it's really nice detail on there. So yeah, a great, all new, 1700 scale, an all new tool kit of the Saratoga from Tamiya. New bike kit, all new bike kit from Tamiya here. It is the 112 scale Panigale S. Panigale is a, a Ducati, new Ducati bike. They're named after a city in Italy. Uh, Ducati claims that this has the highest power to weight ratio of any production motorcycle. Um, I don't have the figures right here in hand, uh, but it certainly looks powerful. You can see just the amazing detail on uh, the, the internal frame there and uh, the engine, uh, big two cylinder motor. Uh, this is coming out in but pretty soon. It's going to come out this month, actually. And if you pan down here, uh, this is a, a separately sold set. It's got some uh, metal parts and whatnot to uh, detail, increase the detail on the front fork and all that good stuff. And then down here, we have the sprues laid out, molded in white and black and this kind of a silvery color with rubber tires uh, and uh, all this kind of good stuff. So it's got these screws in there, so I'm going to guess that you can screw it together. Yeah, so I just confirmed that with the, all these screws here, um, you can take it from this to this and back again, even after assembly. So it's got all kinds of cool features there. So when you, you, go, you go nuts on all this detail, you don't have to worry about not seeing it because a little teeny tiny screwdriver, you can remove all the cowl panels and voila, you can revel in the amazing detail inside. All right, now here we are at the Tamina booth and we're, we want to talk about uh, Mini RC and Mini Four Wheel Drive for those who don't know. You can get uh, model kits from Tamiya, you can build them yourself, but you can customize them with extra parts, and then you can put them on these slots and uh, race them with your buddies. This is, uh, has been booming in Japan for a while. You'll see these if you go to malls and stuff, but it's starting to take off internationally as well, and uh, we know that uh, it's becoming more and more popular, for example, in uh, Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, I think uh, America is, North America is starting to get on board with it. And if you actually haven't uh, looked into it, I suggest checking it out because if you're a fan of models or a fan of RC and, and or cars, uh, there's actually a lot that Mini 4-Wheel Drive can offer you. I mean, for example, uh, you're not getting uh, just like normal cars. You can actually get like kind of these crazy designs and uh, you'll see that you, you, it comes with markings similar to like even LBX type stuff. You can actually uh, customize and create paint the base how you want it, and then add all these kind of details afterwards. And you, you will come up with your own kind of special car, and even though yours might look like somebody else, if you're adding the extra parts underneath it to the chassis and whatnot, yours is gonna perform differently as well. So there's a lot of opportunity to customize, and I think that's why it's, it's really growing so rapidly. All right, here we are at the Aoshima booth, and I wanted to show this to you because I'm in love with the uh, Aventador Roadster. I think I actually uh, saw one of these on the road, maybe, possibly. It went by too fast. But uh, similar to the Avenger that we showed on Gumba TV, I think we uh, made it into the Gundam colors. Yep. We're not going to do that this time. But uh, you can see the, just how um, sexy this car is. Like, it's, it's beautiful. Now, it's going to use a lot of the same parts that we had with the previous Aventador. But if you look down here, you can see they're actually giving you quite a few new parts, which they have to. I mean, you have to redesign a car when you're making it into a roadster. So here they are. You're going to get, of course, a whole new body, as well as the panels. And even the interior is going to have to be changed because when you think about uh, the, the additional supports you need when you start doing away with the roof on, on a real car, you need to make it as rigid as the other one was. So that could, this calls for design changes and of course means new parts when it comes to making a model. And beside that, we have a Mercia Lago. Now this is the GT1 Spa number 25 and uh, it comes complete with all of those markings. Now, uh, I do like Lamborghinis and sometimes I feel a, a little bit pained inside to see them racing because I think they deserve to be just on the normal open roads. But when you actually uh, sit down and watch these races, they're really exciting to see that supercars actually can compete in these type of races. If you're a Godzilla fan like me, then this has got to be one of your favorite tanks. Uh, I basically got into modeling because I loved Godzilla as a kid, and this is the Type 61 Japanese tank. Uh, it was, you see this in a lot of Godzilla movies, so 
I got my start in modeling thanks to Godzilla, and this is one of the first tanks I was exposed to, and I've loved it ever since. Uh, for years, the only kit available was the Tamiya kit, which is not a bad kit, but that's uh, from the 70s, I believe. And now here we have an all-new tooling of the Japanese Self-Defense Force Type 61, so named because it was adopted for service in 1961. Uh, what we have here is just a 3D printer prototype of it. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be anything. This almost looks like Zimmer texture on there from uh, World War II Germany. But uh, no, this is just a 3D print. Uh, just to give you an idea what the size and the parts are going to be. Uh, again, the, the Tamiya kit of the 70s is not a bad kit by any means. But obviously, Fine Mold's modern technology is going to give us the best possible detail, uh, the easiest possible assembly. Um, so again, 3D printed parts here. But here is a diagram of what the runner is going to look like. And here you can see here, one of my favorite things that you see in modern tank kits are link and length tracks. So you get these little links here and uh, the lengths at the top. Because if you come, sorry to jerk you around a bit, but if you come here, you see that the Type 61 has uh, some really pronounced tarumi, it's called in Japanese, sag, I guess is the best way to describe it, uh, on the, uh, the metal tracks. Uh, these aren't metal, but uh, the real tank tracks have that sag. And so that's perfectly replicated in the link and length uh, engineering here. So the top part will be one length of track with the, link, the sag already built in, some links to go around uh, the uh, drive sprocket and the idler wheel, and then uh, another length at the bottom. So really easy and really gives you an excellent look. Uh, now the kit itself comes with some etching parts. You can see here these are the muffler covers and uh, these windshield wipers. I'm not sure. Some braces for somewhere. Uh, so that's included with the kit. Uh, but also sold separately will be a set of uh, even more photo etched metal parts. You see light guards there, uh, some other screens, engine uh, deck vents and stuff like that. Uh, so this is, you'll really be able to make uh, an extremely well detailed, uh, perfectly proportioned uh, model of the uh, Type 61 Japanese tank. And again, if you're a Godzilla fan like, like me, this holds a special place in your heart. Taking a look here at uh, Hasegawa's upcoming new 172nd scale Suhoi 35S flanker. Now, uh, say what you will about uh, the Russians. They're not doing uh, much in the way of making friends internationally these days. But regardless of your national allegiances, you got to admit, the Suhoi 35 has got to be one of the most gorgeous looking aircraft designs ever. It's just cool. It's raw cool and beauty. Everything about the, the way this aircraft is shaped uh, screams performance uh, and the capability. Now the new kit that Hasegawa is doing here, uh, all new tooling, uh, they've tried to keep the number of parts down. As you can see, the, the whole fuselage and wing assembly is just basically two pieces. Uh, and boom, you've almost got an airplane just with those two giant pieces. Then we've got you know the external stores, engine details, the uh, and some cockpit stuff, and really, for an aircraft kit like that, that is a pretty low number of parts. Comes with a display stand, comes with a pilot figure, uh, and the, uh, the nozzles uh, are positionable in up or down position, and the cockpit can be selected as open or closed position. Uh, so they've put a lot of options into uh, a 70 second scale here, kit here too. Uh, so this is definitely something for a lot of collections. Perhaps the most beautiful aircraft currently flying, the new Suhoi 35 from Hasegawa. Six years ago, Hasegawa released a brilliant new kit in 350th scale of the Akagi, uh, perhaps the most famous of all of Japan's aircraft carriers. And now they're going to reissue the kit uh, in 700th scale, uh, which is, of course, you know, the, the basic collector size for the waterline kits. Get a good, good idea how uh, big it is in my hand. Now, Hasegawa had a 1700 Akagi in their lineup, but oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen a, a step up or a level of quality increase this great in a kit before in my life. The detail on the side of this ship compared to the original release is absolutely night and day. Uh, they've done some amazing work on the detail and the depth of the molding here, uh, plus the, uh, you know, the, the very distinctive rear deck here uh, on the flight deck with these, these pillars and all. You can see on the parts here, which they've uh, painted silver to highlight uh, the features, and, the, and the, the tooling, it's really, really uh, a stunningly beautiful and accurate replica uh, of this Japanese carrier. Uh, in fact, in the six years since they released the, the 350th scale version, they say that they've gotten some new information uh, about the design of the ship and the facts about the ship, and it's actually in some ways, although he wouldn't give me the details, more accurate than the 350th scale version uh, from six years ago. So yeah, in terms of, uh, of detail and, re and realism, this is, is one of the finest uh, 700 scale uh, ship kits that I have ever seen. I've always been a huge fan of attack aircraft for whatever reason. Uh, and there's a lot of people who, like myself, 
are big fans of the A10 Warthog. Of course, officially it's the Thunderbolt 2, but nobody calls it that. It's the Warthog. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, this is just a, a, a slight parts variation that upgrades the kit into the, the C, which is, I guess, the current version that's still being used, if they're uh, still using them in, in some areas, because there's, of course, talk they're going to phase out uh, the good old Warthog. Um, but I have a very soft spot in my heart for this kit because when I um, built my first airplane kit as an adult modeler, I built Hasegawa's 172nd Thunderbolt. So even though this is just a slight uh, addition of some new parts and modernization of the kit, uh, again, I have a really soft spot in my heart for this kit and for this aircraft. And it's nice to see that the, uh, the Thunderbolt is, is still getting the love it deserves from the world's model makers. Let me introduce you to my beaver. Um, Hobby Link Japan uh, recently spun all of its import for wholesale uh, operations uh, into a subsidiary which we call the Beaver Corporation. Uh, you know, beaver's always working hard. That's kind of the, where that comes from. Right. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really actually affect our, our retail customers who know us as Hobby Link Japan and through our website, but we now have a separate subsidiary which handles the import of great foreign hobby products into the Japanese market. Uh, so this is our booth. We have a booth at the Shizuoka Hobby Show uh, with the latest from some of the, the great uh, international manufacturers. We thought we'd show off some of the highlights uh, of what we've got in our booth today. So let's start with Hmong models, shall we? Hmong, Meng, pronounced Meng or Hmong, depending on who you are and where you're from. Um, of course, Hmong's got a lot of fantastic new items out always. They've uh, really been creating a lot of of, uh, of talk that way, but their latest and greatest is going to be this uh, BMPT, which is a um, basically a T72 chassis with some very mean looking hardware on the top of it. Yep. Um, basically ready to take on absolutely anything except for other tanks. Probably. Uh, Although with a T72 chassis, it could probably take a decent hit and get away with it, but uh, one hit on that top structure, it's, it's all yeah, over as far um, as the fight goes. Apparently, this uh, sees a lot of action in some of the uh, domestic. Uh, Issues, shall we yeah, say? That, yeah, uh, Chechnya, that kind of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's over there. So. Uh, but yeah, definitely a very modern and uh, very active vehicle these days. And it looks like Hmong is going to be the first to market with this, but I hear that there's two other companies are also yeah, doing this. Yeah, apparently rumors have it. Zvezda and um, maybe even Trumpeter. Trumpeter and Zvezda also going to come out. But yeah, well, yeah. You didn't hear it from based, us, on, based on what we've seen, though, this is going to be the one you're going to want, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the detail here yeah. looks fantastic. Uh, moving right along, so Hmong is one of the big brands that we handle at the Beaver Corporation, and my probably my personal favorite has got to be Wingnut Wings. Ta-da! Of course, uh, the great company uh, from New Zealand, started by uh, film director Peter Jackson. Uh, they have just also uh, released two brand new kits. Uh, we have the Roland C2A late version. Uh, which is an interestingly structured two-seating aircraft that could be used for almost anything. Uh, reconnaissance, fighter, light bombing, all kinds of stuff it was uh, put to use for. Uh, and then the uh, earlier version of it, uh, just the C2 here, which is uh, frankly, in, in my view, not quite as interesting. Uh, the C2A with, with that uh, separate seats is uh, a very interesting design. So these are the latest and greatest from uh, the folks at uh, Wingnut Wings who who Richard Alexander, who happens to be in Japan today, um, and uh, has been showing off these kits, explained, you know, as they're starting to get into some of the more obscure subject matter from World War One, even they've had to start explaining to their customers what this aircraft is and why you might want to buy and model it. Uh, hopefully, we won't have to uh, too much trouble with that. Um, let's see here. We're going to skip over this new Edward BF109 for the moment because we're going to talk about that later, and we'll jump to amusing hobby. Uh, who've come out with yet another amusing kit of an amusing subject. Yep. Uh, what can you tell us about this thing, Brian? Uh, well, it's based on the paper panzer, called so-called paper panzer, because they never actually made any of them. They were just uh, you know, design drawings and whatnot. Uh, Germany, in the, in, uh, into World War II, uh, based on the, the, the Leve, which means lion. And actually, so this is... Uh, like a, is that a tiger chassis? Uh, sort of, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of those uh, paper panzers were based on tiger-like underpinnings as, as right. it were uh, but this is even a paper panzer based on a paper panzer so this oh is like boy. twice removed paper panzer thing uh, this is so, uh, super speculative yeah yeah the normal one had the turret in the middle in the usual position but these are some speculative ones okay. with the turrets in the back and it's a type a and a type b uh, that just has some uh, different details here and there but yeah, highly well, what detailed. Was the, what was the point? I mean, just huge gun or what? Yeah, essentially, you know, Hitler was wanting to put, the guns are different. You see, that's like a, an 88 or maybe a 128 on there. And this is an even larger gun, maybe a, 
170 something or whatever. So yeah. Alrighty. Okay, let's see here. Moving right along, we'll skip over this center section. Just to see my hand. We'll skip over the center section and jump over here uh, to the X47B, Ta -da! which is uh, that thing you may have seen t on TV or in YouTube videos, a completely unmanned uh, drone or attack uh, aircraft that the, uh, the military has been experimenting with. It actually has even achieved carrier operations. Well, that's its claim uh, to fame right now. Yeah. It's the first cat launch and, uh, and, and uh, recovered. Yeah, and it's uh, it's still testing. I think the uh, U.S. military is hoping to put it into active service in 2019. Uh, we have a brand new 148 scale kit of this from Freedom Models, Freedom Models. which is uh, a new company from Taiwan, I believe. That's yes? correct, yes. Yeah. Uh, and so far it looks pretty good, a very decent first offering. Uh, also in, uh, in, in big air airplanes, we've got the uh, brand new 132nd scale Gloucester Meteor from HK Models. Uh, the guys who put out this infamously huge B-17 kit, which if we pan up just a little bit, yeah, there's that monster. The big old B-17. Uh, now they've, uh, they've done a very simple, uh, straightforward job on the, uh, the Meteor. It's not a super, super detailed kit. They've uh, right up front admitted they're going to let the, uh, the Czech Photo Edge companies take care of the, the folks who want to do all of the, the really heavy uh, detailing up. Uh, but for uh, somebody who's got a couple of days and wants to put together a nice kit of the Meteor, uh, this would be the one to go with. Now let's uh, kind of squat down here, it gets a little uncomfortable, and look at the, uh, the latest from Kitty Hawk, uh, also known as Panda, their, uh, their armor uh, kits, but they have just released a brand new F-101 Voodoo, and oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. In fact, the, uh, the president of the company built this kit himself. Yeah, he was just here telling uh, us about he was just, he yeah, just him. Uh, he's done a fantastic job with this, this new kit, uh, and uh, if you're uh, a fan of the Century series, this is going to be a super, super welcome addition. Were there uh, any, any, probably an old monogram or something, right? Are there anybody yeah, else? There's a 48 that monogram and a bunch of others in 70 seconds, so yeah, it's nice They're to see They're all probably this. decades old, though, I would think. Uh, yeah, yeah, but there's never been an AC single-seater in 48, oh, really? so that, that's okay. pretty cool. so this is uh, brand new in that. Mm -hmm. And next to here, you can see they're working on the F9F Cougar. These are some uh, rapid prototype-ish test shots that yeah, two -seater they, and a single -seat they brought over for us. But that's, uh, we don't even have price or release information nope. on that coming yet. Coming soon, coming soon. Uh, but yeah, this Voodoo is uh, pretty much ready to go at, uh, at 6,000 yen retail. Yeah. And if you look over here to the left, the Panda kits, uh, there's a couple of BMD-1s. That's the, you know, the, the, the light, light assault combat vehicle there. I think that's those a... Are, those are pretty small. That's 35th scale, right? That's 35th. That's a tiny, tiny vehicle. Uh, but enough to get the job done. And those are coming out this month. Actually, I think we just got our shipment in uh, this week. All right. Uh, of course, there's, along with Hmong, there's been some other companies, uh, new companies coming out of China. Uh, some very interesting stuff coming out these days. Another one of those companies is Takom. Uh, and here's their latest. We have a German civilian car. Uh, with a figure. He doesn't look like he's actually out to pick up milk or anything. Uh, yep. He's got something else in mind there. Uh, but we have a, a, a gentleman in a German civilian car, uh, which is brand new. So is their, uh, their Leopard here, which has uh, only been out for a bit. And the Saint Shaman, which I think for a lot of people, until they released this kit, nobody even knew this thing existed. Nope. Another one, uh, very uh, World obscure War World War I uh, vehicle. Uh, probably obscure for a reason, because I don't think it worked very good at all. Yeah, that overhang on the front there, yeah. Right. Uh, yet another new uh, company out of China, Orochi, and uh, Orochi has announced they're doing an M3A2 Bradley, not to be confused with the Bradleys being done by some other Chinese companies, but the M3A2, they're the only ones doing that. This is still a test shot, no pricing or release date set yet. Uh, we're hearing maybe mid-summer uh, as believe. a release yep. date, but yep. as, a, as an initial uh, test shot, it looks pretty good. They did say they had to do a little bit more work on some of the details, but... Yep. You're the tank guy, Brian. They're polishing it up. Yeah, it looks excellent the way it is now. I mean, as a as a you know first run, just a test shot here. Uh, they've they've really come close to perfection as it is now, and they're going to do a lot more polishing on it. And uh, they, in their own words, they're going to get it to as close to perfection as possible. Okay. Metal tracks, metal gun barrel, and some PE parts, uh, a figure, and uh, some resin uh, stowage. Another great new uh, manufacturer from China is Model Collect, and they're doing a series of uh, T-72-based armored vehicles. Uh, they have die-cast chassis and plastic upper hulls, so they're going to have uh, both kits and fully finished models. These are their fully finished ones. This, this is how they came right out of the box. Uh, as you can see here, the detail is very sharp. 
very accurate. Uh, very, they've, got, they've got the heft of quality from the die-cast chassis. Uh, so this is the T TOS-1A uh, rocket launcher, and this is a T-72 main battle tank over here. Uh, again, the detail is great, even on the bottom. Nice tracks. The tracks are uh, flexible vinyl belt types. Uh, go on real easy. And, uh, but again, these are the, the fully finished ones, and this is exactly how they come out of the box. Uh, so this is another great new brand from China that we're carrying at Beaver Corporation. Okay, and now we have a whole bunch of stuff here from Wolfpack. They're out of uh, Korea. Korea. Yep. yep. And uh, they've got uh, a whole series of uh, T-38s, uh, which have been out for a bit now. Uh, looked very, very good. And they've also been doing some uh, interesting releases where they're combining Italeri parts with some of their own resin and photo etch and decals to create Japanese versions of, uh, of some classics. Um, here's the uh, MH35 Sea Dragon uh, in the Japanese version uh, with markings for the Japanese uh, Maritime Self-Defense Forces and the parts to, to make the kit accurate uh, for that. Um, you gotta love these big helicopters. Gosh, it's a huge, huge thing. And then speaking of huge, right next door we've got a 72nd it's, again, it's uh, based on the Italeri kit, uh, C-130 Hercules, uh, in the uh, Japanese uh, Air Self-Defense Force version with uh, resin parts for the nacelles and other bits in the aircraft to uh, accurize that uh, in the Japanese version. So for, in both cases, uh, some exciting stuff for people who like to do uh, Japanese versions of well-known aircraft. Now, I told you we would skip over the, uh, the brand new Edward BF-109 for now. Uh, and the reason we're going we're gonna to skip over that is because I'm not the guy to talk about that. We have somebody who's much better uh, at talking about the new Edward BF-109. And I would like to introduce him right now as soon as this lady is done with this announcement. A few minutes ago I explained that I was going to skip over the new Edward BF-109. Uh, and that's because I didn't want to talk about it. And that's because there's someone here far more qualified than I am to talk about it. So let's head over here and we see that there's a gentleman here building the kit right here in our booth um, and he happens to be shockingly Czech. Yes uh, I'm Czech, have I to say something Czech? <laughs> <laughs> Ahoy! Ahoy! Uh, let me uh, introduce everyone uh, to Mr. Vladimir Schultz who is the president of Edward and uh, of course the company that just produced this wonderful new BF-109. Congratulations uh, Vladimir, this looks like a fantastic kit. Thank you very much Scott. So, um, you are really building it for us right here in the booth. Yes, it's building for you. Thank you so much. So, what, what can you tell us about the kit, Vlad? What are its, what are the the exciting new features or or the the traits of the G that you've really worked hard to? Hopefully, to bring out it is here? Uh, it is the newest. It, ha it has to be best. Mm -hmm. Well detailed, mm -hmm. best detailed, well fitting. Right. What more to say? Just to build. Yeah. Uh, don't talk, build. It's always much, much better. I'm looking, and I, I don't know if everyone can see this on camera, but the uh, the fine rivet detail that you guys have, have done here is is so fine. It looks like, you know, if you put on too much primer, you're just going to wipe it right out there. It's it's really, really well-tooled. So did you have... Uh, Actual aircraft to, to work from uh, when you worked on this kit, or uh, not kind of... uh, not actually in our office, of course, but uh, we were <laughs> in a couple of the museums. We uh -huh. were also in Manching uh, in uh, in Germany, right? Which is a factory where the Eurofighters are built up, and they they have three examples of B 109 Gs, well, by a mm -hmm. uh, couple of versions, right? G four, G six, G ten. So we did study them. We were in Wiener Neustadt also, we were in Washington DC, so we, we saw many, many Messerschmitts during our long development of this kit because uh, we were working two years just on the design. Wow, that's, uh, that's a, a long period of time. So I'm sure you really did your homework um, on that. So all you guys on the boards who think you know more about the G than he does, you don't. So. Sure, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure there are many, many guys who knows much more than we are. We are, and um, it's pretty, pretty sure that they will easily explain us what all is wrong. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But this, uh, yeah, it looks. It must be better in future. You know, it's it's great because uh, you know there are there's actually 
Um, I'm, you know, my, my great love in, in scale modeling is 48 scale World War II aircraft. And it seems to me now that basically you're the only guy in the world making 48 scale <laughs> World War II aircraft anymore. Maybe I'm forgetting somebody, but I, I keep missing them. It is what we want to do, so uh, no problem for future. <laughs> Great. I have a lot of suggestions. Do you take suggestions about future? Yes, yeah, give me. Give me. Give me. <laughs> I loved your Hellcat. I built that, and uh, it's uh, in a prominent place on my shelf. So, thank you, thank you. I, I like it too. <laughs> okay. Well, Vladimir, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to visit our booth and to, to work on this kit for us. We'll let you get oh, back to work, so yes, you can, yes, sir, I will you can work finish it. Very that. hard for you, Scott. All right. Thanks, Vlad, <laughs> and thanks for watching.